wanna be afraid every time I face the way. I don't wanna be afraid. I don't wanna be afraid. I don't wanna fear the storm just because I hear it roar. And I don't wanna fear the storm. I don't wanna fear the storm. If he speaks still, say the word and I will set my feet upon the sea. Till I'm dancing in the deep. If peace be still, you are here, so it is well. Even when my eyes can't see, I will trust the voice that speaks. No, I'm not gonna be afraid, cause these waves are only waves. I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna be afraid I'm not gonna fear the storm You are greater than this roar I'm not gonna fear the storm I'm not gonna fear at all Peace be still Say the word and I will Set my feet upon the sea Till I'm dancing in the deep Peace be still You are here so it is well Even when my eyes can't see I will trust the voice that speaks Peace Peace over me Peace Jesus, Jesus, oh, you silence me. 
Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, your name is a lie that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make darkness tremble Jesus 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 you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence me Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Welcome to Graceville TV. My name is Nicole, and we're so glad you can join us today. Please enjoy this episode of Raising Kings in the Kingdom by Pastor Tom Chin. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Graceville. Uh, we're on Graceville TV, and this will be our second episode on the Kingdom of God or the Kingdom of Heaven. So, um, the last time we talked about Jesus' mission statement, right? And I told you that. Um, Jesus, you know, after his baptism and uh, he had gone to the desert, led to the desert by the Holy Spirit, um, he then came up in Matthew 4, 17, he said this, he said this very clearly, he said, you know, he says, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is here or near. And so that was his mission statement, the repentance and the kingdom of God, right? The changing of your mind and an introduction to the kingdom of God. So we learned that the last time. We also learned that Jesus' main goal 
was to introduce, like I said, introduce God's kingdom to us and to restore us as kings in the kingdom. Now, a lot of us don't think about that much. You know, we don't think of the term kings because last week's theme or term that I introduced to you was king, right? So we don't think much about that word king, but actually he came to restore us as kings. Now, some of you may grow up in church and you heard about discipleship, you heard about being discipled, you, you know, or, or, or any sort of, you know, that kind of term. But I tell you, what he really did come for was to restore us as kings in the kingdom because he came to introduce a real kingdom, right? So we also learned, the, the third thing we learned was that we were made in the image and likeness of God. So what does that mean? That means we have to be restored as kings to reflect the glory of the king of kings, who is God the Father, right? So the fourth thing I want to teach you from last week was that we were to co-rule, co-rule with Jesus and to have dominion, that means to have, to have power and authority on the domain, which is the territory of the kingdom. So I told you every kingdom has to have a territory, has to have every kingdom has to have a domain, a territory. And in this case, it is earth, right? So that's God's original plan, right? Amen. So I told you that we are to be the best students all through the guidance and the training of the Holy Spirit, our teacher, right? The Holy Spirit in the Bible is known as our teacher, given by Jesus to be our teacher, to lead us into all truth and to truly understand the constitution of God's kingdom, right? So, which is the word of the king called the Bible, right? So that's what we learned last week. So this week, uh, last week's uh, word, keyword was king. Now, today, this week's uh, word I want to introduce to you is the word trust. Trust, capital T, R-U-S-T. Now, the very first ingredient needed for us to be raised up as kings since we have been born again into royalty, which I told you that also. Remember, kings become kings through birthright, right? You don't vote somebody to be a king. He just becomes a king. So we are born again, and the very first ingredient is believing, belief, or having faith. Some of you may have heard of faith. Some of you may have heard of belief. But I'm telling you today, I want to focus on the word trust. Trust, right? It's a lot easier for you to understand faith when you understand the word trust. So Jesus said, unless you have faith like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven, right? So we find that in the Bible, he says, truly I tell you, I love the way Jesus starts his sentences, you know, like his speech or his sermon. He says, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. Now, we need to understand that is very real. Whatever the king says is true and correct even today. So unless, unless he says, you become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So how many of you know kids, you know, like I have kids, now they're grown, but you may have small children right now, you're sitting at home listening to me, you may have small children. And small children, you know, when you take them out, you cross the street and you, you say, hang on to dad's hand or mom's hand, let's cross the street. You know, I've never seen a single kid that looks up to the dad or mom and says, are you sure, mom, you know how to cross this street? I don't think your children says that to you, right? And if you tell your kid, you know, like, uh, well, let's go and watch a movie, right? Your kid don't turn around and say, mom, are you sure you have money for movies? They don't question that, right? And so when you say, hey, bye, honey, I'm going to work. To your, to your daughter, your daughter doesn't turn around and say, are you sure that you're going to work? <laughs> right? So you see, God is the source of everything. God is the source of all things. Everything was made through him and nothing was made that was not made by him. Okay? 
So all things, now listen to this, all things belong to God. All things belong to God, right? And it's all His. We find in 1 Corinthians 3, 22 to 23 in the New Living Translation, all things belong to you, it says this, and you belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to God. Did you just hear me? All things belong to you, you belong to Jesus, and Jesus belongs to God. So if you take the middle part out, you and Jesus, all things belong to God, right? So in other words, what, like, all things belong to God. That's simple as that, right? So here's the good news, right? There's always good news. The, the Bible is the good news, amen? So here's the good news. God actually wants to share it with us. He wants to share this with us. All of the things that he created, all of the things that he, he, he spoke into existence, he wants to share that with us. He actually wants us to co-rule or reign with him here on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that amazing? It's like sometimes we complain a lot, right? Like, you know, we said, like, you know, my life, it's not so good and nothing's going right for me and this and that. But if you erase all of that, you find the fundamental truth that God actually wants to share all things that he had created in and through him with us. Yes, you and I. Isn't that amazing? That is super amazing. Chosen by the king to have dominion over this domain. Remember, dominion, the word means power and authority. Domain means this territory. A, a dominion, like a kingdom without territory is not a kingdom. Like it's, it's just not a kingdom, right? So the territory is called earth. So now, I want to talk a little bit about the journey. We, today we're going to talk about, you know, the journey of becoming a king, right? It requires a lot of ingredients. It requires a lot of ingredients. But the very first ingredient is called trust. Now remember the word trust, T-R-U-S-T, -S or faith, okay? Now, <clears throat> you know, just like a baby, like if you, if you think of a baby, right? When the baby is born, it's kind of like human babies. Is They're kind of helpless, okay? They, they can only cry. They can't walk. You know, they rely 100% on the parents or the caregiver or caretaker, whoever that's taking care of the baby, the baby is relying 100% on that person, right? And then the baby has to go through life and as, as the baby grows up, becomes a kid and becomes an, uh, a, a youth and an adult later on, you know, there's a lot of things that this person has to learn, okay? So it's no different being a king, being raised up as a king in the kingdom, right? But just like the baby, the first thing that you got to do, you got to do, and they're born with it, is to trust, okay? Now, somehow, we've lost that since Adam's time, right? We talked about it last week. And so, you know, how you know this is when you look at Jesus, you look at Jesus, right? You read the Bible, and how Jesus, when he first chose his 12 disciples. A lot of people call them disciples. Uh, I like to call them kings. He chose the first 12 kings that he wants to co-rule the territory with earth, right? So he would always say to them, oh, what little faith you have, right? Do you ever notice that? Like people saying, you know, Jesus, are you, are you sure you chose these guys? Like, are you sure these guys are your disciples? These guys are the apostles? The whole time you're with them, the three years you spent time raising them up as kings in the kingdom, the whole time you're just saying, oh, how come you trust me so little? What little faith you have, right? Now, God, the king of the universe, is still asking us that same question today, right? So if you're listening today, God is saying the same thing to us. What little faith you have. Now, we need to check our hearts. We need to know, or well, we need to find out, why? Why is it that we have so little faith? But you may say, oh, no, Pastor, I disagree with you. I have strong faith in Jesus. All right, let me ask you, 
What happens to you when the first challenge happens to you? Okay? For instance, you don't have enough money for school fees. What do you do? Do you go to the king? Or do you start Googling? Trying to figure out how to fund your school fees. Or you may be calling your aunts and uncles and aunties and everybody that you could grab your, you know, dial on your phone and say, hey, can I borrow some money? Where's that trust, right? Or one of your parents are very sick. You know, they're very sick. Do you go to the king and have an audience with the king of kings, our Lord God Almighty? You got to check your heart, right? The other thing is a loss of a loved one. That's very hard. You know, in the last little while, my wife, you know, she's lost a few aunties due to COVID. And it's not easy. It's not easy to see your loved one just depart. Um, where's our trust? Where's our faith, right? Or your marriage. Relational stuff falling apart. Uh, just today, um, I talked to a friend. And the friend said, oh, I have this person um, that is needing a mom with three children, young children, and needs a place to stay. Do you know of a place? This is just a few minutes ago before I arrived here. And I said, oh, what's the urgent matter here? Why is it so urgent? She goes, well, because she's divorcing her husband. Or your child may be having suicidal thoughts. Now, as a pastor, I've gone through a lot of counseling <laughs> over the years. And believe you me, there's a lot of people that are struggling mentally. Mental health is a real issue. And people are struggling. But you know, the king of kings, in all these situations that we just mentioned, is actually training you to be a true king. Right? It sounds hard, but it's actually training you to be a true king in the kingdom. It's a training process. Okay? And it starts with trusting him. The word trust. You got to start trusting him. That's why Jesus is able to say that he is the Alpha and the Omega. Right? He is the Alpha and the Omega. And we got to trust God. Remember, if you don't know what the problems are, uh, the, your problems are, now, we first need to discover what Jesus' solutions are. That's the key thing. We need to figure out and learn what the king has decreed as solutions before we were even born. He already knew. He gave all the solutions. And to figure out your problem, you need to figure out, first discover the solutions, right? So, now, if Jesus is always saying, oh, what little faith or trust you have to the disciples over the three-year period, um, while they were following him and being trained, um, that tells us we lack trust when we worry, right? So, the trust or the faith is the first ingredient needed for us to be raised up as kings, in the kingdom, right? That's the first ingredient. Take a note of this. That's your first ingredient. That's your first course. That's your first past, you know, like paragraph. Like when you enter into training to be kings in the kingdom, the first thing you're going to hear is what little faith you have, right? That means if he's saying that, remember, you want to know the problem, you got to find a solution. The solution is, what little faith you have. <laughs> so we got to say, okay, but well, I don't know how to increase my... No, it's trust. You know how to increase trust. You do. Okay? But sometimes people confuse faith and then they, they word faith and then they don't know. Oh, well, I, I, I don't have enough faith. I don't have as much faith as you do. Wait a minute. You cultivate that trust. You just trust. Right? So that's faith. And so, here's an example of what I'm talking about, right? It's good to have examples. There was a time when Jesus and his followers were in a boat. 
And you know what? The storm came and the storm, I don't know, the storm just kind of just burrowed down and then just, just hit that boat and they were in trouble. The boat was sinking, the storm was just, just pushing them around like crazy and they were all afraid. All the disciples were afraid. And guess what Jesus was doing? He was napping. <laughs> he was like, wait, you know? And then they wake him up. And then, you know, they were panicking. And then what did Jesus say to them? Now, remember, you want to know your problem? You got to read what the king says about you. The solutions that the king is giving you today in the Bible will give you a preview to your problem at heart, okay? So what did Jesus say to them? The boat is sinking. The storm is going crazy. And they are waking Jesus. Come on, come on. We're sinking. And Jesus said to them, what little faith you have. See that? What little faith you have. And then he went out and rebuked the storm. And the storm stopped. How come? How come? Because the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, owns everything. He's Lord over the storm. He's Lord because he created everything. Everything, the universe, everything. He's Lord over them, right? It's like you, you uh, made a table, right? You, you're actually Lord over the table, okay? You own the table. So you can so choose to do what you want with the table, like this table right in front of me, right? I can choose it to, to put my sermon notes here, or I could choose it to put my drink here. Or I could just choose to donate it. God made everything. Jesus is the King of Kings. Right? So how to operate as kings in the kingdom? That's the key question. Right? Time and time and again, Jesus would teach them about the kingdom of God. Right? And kings, by the way, kings are also lord over their territory. Right? So... He would always start off his sermon by saying, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Or the kingdom of heaven is like this. Or, like a small mustard seed. Or he would say things like, truly, truly, I tell you. <laughs> Everything Jesus did was to show you and I the goodness of the king of kings. Our father in heaven. Amen. And his rulership over his domain. And how to rule with him. Those are the key points. Now, Jesus showed us who the king is. The true supplier. right? The true supplier. The source of everything good. And he is faithful. He is faithful. right? And he showed us that the king is trustworthy. Like how Jesus taught us to pray. Give us today our daily bread, right? Just like the manna that came down from heaven for the Israelites when they were trapped in the desert and they had no food. Just like that, right? Or just like the Red Seas that parted for Moses and the Israelites when they were trapped. Just like that, he's faithful, right? He is the supplier. Even when you don't think there's a supply coming, he will supply that, right? And like Daniel, Daniel, Prophet Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. And guess what? He was untouched, right? Or another example are the three Hebrew boys that was thrown into the furnace because they didn't want to bow down to what the king wanted them to do. And so they stayed true to God. And you know what? They came out unscathed. They didn't have a single uh, burn or anything. The only thing that got burned off were the, the bind that they had bound them with the ropes. So many examples, yet we are still with so little faith. How come? How come, right? Both in the New Testament and the Old Testament, God showed us His faithfulness. He showed us His grace and mercy. So to be the best student, and we always talk about being the best student, because if you're going to be raised up as kings, you're getting mentored, you're getting raised up and taught by the Holy Spirit. To be the best student, one must trust. The number one thing. The truth written in the Bible. That's the number one thing. Okay, We must have faith in the constitution of the kingdom of God. The Bible. 
Amen. So that means we got to open up our Bible. <laughs> See, if we don't know what our constitution is in the kingdom of heaven, and we're supposed to be raised up as kings, uh, it's going to be very challenging. Very, very challenging, right? If we don't, we don't follow the constitution, guess what? We will become lawless. If we don't understand the principles of life, we end up not knowing God's promises for us. Worse, we won't live out to the fullest who we really are as kings in the kingdom of heaven. So sometimes when we don't know and we don't read our constitution, the Bible, we act like paupers. We're supposed to be kings, but we keep on begging. We keep on begging. And we don't know what has been promised to us by the good God of this universe. So do you remember in the book of John chapter 15, Jesus was teaching on radical faith, radical trust. Like, I call it radical trust, right? So I'm going to read to you some parts of John chapter 15 uh, from the New International Version, okay? So 15, one says, I am Jesus. Jesus talking here. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Wow. Pay attention to that. <laughs> His father is the gardener. He's the vine. We are the branches. Right? Anyone that does not bear fruit, cut off. Okay? While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that you will be even more fruitful. So just because you're producing fruit does not mean you're, you're, you're going to sit pretty and do nothing. No, the gardener actually comes and prunes you even more. Why? Because he wants you to produce more fruit. Okay? And then verse 3 says, You're already clean. He was talking to his disciples. You're already clean because the word I have spoken to you. Right? Remember his mission? The word that he's already spoken to them. Remain in me as I also remain in you. What does that mean? Remain. It means trust in me as I trust in you. Okay? The word trust, remember today. Right? No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. That means neither can you bear fruit unless you trust in me. Okay? And verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you could do nothing. You can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. Verse 7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Verse 8, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Verse 13, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. Pay attention to the word learn. Everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. That's right. right. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Did you just hear that? <laughs> Sometimes you go, well, I, ch I chose, I chose, I chose God. No, God chose you. The king chooses. Okay? The king chooses you. And then when you hear your voice, you choose him. Okay? That's how it works. In God's heavenly kingdom, the king has the absolute say. And if he chooses you, you're chosen. 
Okay? So when we read this passage, we ask ourselves, what is Jesus talking about here? Well, he's zooming into one point, one point. Trust in him. Abide in him. Right? You keep hearing that. You trust in me. Unless you abide in me, you can produce nothing. You, can, you can't do anything. You'll be cut off like the, the branches that withers away without getting you know, connected to the vine, not getting nutrients, not getting water, not getting anything. And then eventually wither it away. And then guess what? People use it as firewood. That's what he was saying. So we must learn to be kings in the kingdom of heaven. And we must totally rely on him. Totally trust in him. Okay? He is the king. Amen. He is the provider. We just need to trust that we receive from him already. right? Because he chose us. He chose us. So when he chose you, comes with it is the entire kingdom. You have received that already. Now we just need to believe. <laughs> right? So in Mark eleven twenty four, it says in the New King James Version, it says, Therefore I say to you, it is Jesus saying, right? It is talking. He says, Therefore I say to you, and he's saying that to you and I too, all things from which you pray and ask, believe you have received them, and you will have them. You just have to believe. You have to trust. In other words, he says, trust me because I already chose you. I chose you with everything that I have comes with my choice. Because I chose you. I chose you. That's, that's why the word love is connected to the word choose. Right? It's not an emotion. Love is a choice. God first loved you and I. He first chose us. And with that comes the entire kingdom of heaven. Why? Because he wanted us to co-rule with him. Amen? So we must trust him. Trust the king. Right? If we don't show trust and always doubting the king, right? then when we step up as kings, what would your subject see in you? Now, you step up as kings, what would your subject see in you? You always have mistrust, doubts, fear, worry. <laughs> I don't know. Check your heart. If you have all that right now, you have a lot of mistrust. That would then be the nature of the king that your subjects are serving. One that is not trusting and always second-guessing. Right? And that would become the culture where you lead. As a king, as a leader. And you may say, hey, Pastor Tom, I'm no king. What are you talking about? Well, wait, you're a leader. Everyone's a leader. You're leading something or someone or some people. If you're at home, you're leading your family. If you're in the office, you're leading your cohorts, your friends, your co-workers. If you're at a warehouse, you're leading if you're the one with the ticket to be able to drive the forklift, you're leading, you're teaching others. But if you don't trust anybody, you don't trust God, you have a sense of mistrust all the time, that's the culture that you exude. You, you, you're, you're showing people that this is what we do. We don't trust each other. We don't choose each other. In other words, we don't love each other. That's why Jesus says, love each other. Love God and love each other. Right? Because God already chose you. Now, with that thankful heart, choose Him. And then choose each other. So if you're struggling with trust today, especially trusting in God, know this. He is the source of everything. Everyone else is just a resource. Without the vine, we can do nothing, right? And Jesus also said that even if we bear fruit, you go, wow, I'm in church, you know, I'm, I'm bearing fruit. I witnessed to so many people. Yeah, okay. But he said in John 15, he says, the king will still prune us to bear more fruit. Yes. So the training, this is training. Jesus is talking about training here. 
The training to be kings in the kingdom of heaven requires that we go through intense and sometimes downright difficult training. Yeah. And we will get more difficult. Jesus came to model and show us what heavenly kingship is like. Right? He showed us how a king serves. You know how he did that? Washing of feet. <laughs> okay? He showed us how a king obeys. How did he do that? Through water baptism. He showed us how a king helps his subject. Healing of the sick. He showed us and demonstrated a king's authority, casting out demons. He showed us the king has power and authority over his domain or territory by calming the storm. He rebuked the storm. Remember that story? A king is benevolent. He fed 5,000 people, 5,000 men and several thousand women, actually more than 5,000 people. Now, a king trusts the source of all things, God, the Father. And he did that, and he showed us even to his death on the cross. And after the cross, the king receives glory, resurrected and defeated death from the promise of the Father. You see, God is the source of all things. Right? Now, we need to trust our Father wholeheartedly. Our God is good. Jesus has overcome many difficulties of this world by trusting the Heavenly Father. He's dad, our dad, right? He's faithful, full of grace, and he trains us and raises us up as kings in the kingdom of heaven. So when you go through difficulties in life, remember it's a training. Okay, you're getting trained to be a king so that your breakthroughs will be your influence in the territory you're caring for, for the king of kings. So say, stay true to the king of kings. Amen. Even when things don't go well, sometimes through this COVID season, I've seen a lot of friends lost their jobs. And... They are very mad at their employer, mad at the government, mad at everybody. But I tell you what, they are the resource. The true source is our Father in heaven, right? So the, I believe that he has a better plan for you. A new training is coming up. A new job is coming up. So when you believe that you receive already, you shall have, right? So I hope that this message encourages you today. Now, just to recap, first step on learning to be a king in the kingdom of heaven is to, number one, abide and trust in Jesus. Number two, realize he's the source. Number three, realize he provides. Number four, he's good and taking care of you, even right now as we speak. So I hope you're blessed by this message. And until next time, I'm Pastor Tom Chin. See you again at Grace Gold Church. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. I know you were blessed by this. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you'd like more of our social media, just check our description box below. We'll see you guys next time.